Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. This is the second episode in the new series about the Dev Day updates to the OpenAI APIs. And in this video, we'll be talking about chat completions again, and specifically two features that have been added in. One is called Response Format, and the other is called Seed, which is supposed to give more consistent answers for the same prompts. So if you want to learn about all that and more, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I want to experiment with is this new seed property. And it says that this feature is in beta. Uh, but basically, what I understand it should do is that if it's provided, the answers to our prompts should be consistent uh, for the same prompt. So just to demonstrate what I think is going to happen or what the issue it's trying to solve is, if I head here to the playground, and this is currently just the completion set up without uh, the seed. Uh, you can see here that I gave it the prompt write a haiku, and it gave me this haiku here on the bottom. And if I send in the same exact prompt, okay, so write a haiku, you can see here that it kind of changes the haiku a little bit. So it's not giving me consistently the same answer. So one time it's moonlight, another time it's mountain, etc. So what I think it'll do is that if I provide the seed, then it should give the same answer here every time. Uh, so let's try it out. And it basically says here in the documentation that this should just be uh, an integer. So theoretically, even if I just pass in, let's say, the number one, uh, then this should work. But let's see what this does. Um, so I'm going to go here into the editor. And I'm going to go to the back end. And I'm going to create a, a new back end for our playground. I don't want to mess around with this chat completions that we built last time. If everything I'm saying until now seems like super fast and you don't understand the context, then you probably missed the video right before this one, uh, which kind of explains how to do the basic setup for the chat completions. Uh, and that's where I'm picking up. So you might want to pause and head back there if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but if you already know chat completions and you know what you're doing and you just want to check out the new cool stuff uh, from Dev Day, then you're in the right place. Uh, so let me go ahead and create a new backend file. And I'm going to call this one uh, Playground. And I'm going to copy over the code here from the chat completions and put it uh, right over here. And this we could actually pretty much just play around with in the back end. Uh, so let me open up, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. And this is a very basic uh, call to uh, the chat completions endpoint. And I'm gonna use the example messages that I have set up here. So let me just pass those in to the messages. And I'm also going to set up the seed. So seed, and I'm just gonna put one. Because uh, it said it could be an integer, so one is an integer. Uh, and I'm also going to change these messages so that it just says uh, write a haiku, let's say. And I'm purposely picking something that has some level of uh, creativity to it, so it would make sense to expect different answers each time, unless we specifically said not to provide the same answer. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and try running this and seeing what we get back is responses. So I'm going to run it once. And for some reason, it's giving me a lot of different responses. So here we have autumn leaves in flight, autumn leaves in flight. And uh, OK, this is a console log, I guess, that I have in there somewhere. Let me <laughs> let me take a look at that. Oh. Get chat completion. Let me, yeah, here. So this is a log here that I have of the response, which I don't need at the moment. And from what I saw, it gave it gave the same answer twice. I don't know why it ran twice. Maybe I pressed run by accident twice. Uh, let me zoom in here again. I just want to make sure you guys can see, because that's that's the whole point of the tutorial. Uh, yeah, editor X, fun, fun, fun stuff. Okay, so here I am back in the back end, and let's try running this again. Okay, so autumn leaves in flight, great, and we'll run it again. And autumn leaves in flight, and run it again. 
and autumn leaves, autumn leaves, autumn leaves. So awesome. So it does seem to be working. <laughs> and it was as simple as just passing in that integer. And just to like do a proof of concept, so let's get rid of the seed for a second. And let's try running it again. And yeah, it changed. OK, and if I run it again, then changed. And now let me put in back the original seed. And let's see if it gives us the same response that it was giving before. Uh, so let, with the autumn leaves and whatnot. So let me uh, get rid of all this, run it again with the seed. Yep, autumn leaves in flight, autumn leaves in flight. I don't know why it's running the function twice. But yeah, okay, so that's pretty cool. And I'm guessing that if I change the seed here, then it will give me um, another consistent answer. So like if it was two, then it would give a, a different answer, but also consistently. Um, so yeah, you have, I know it's in beta, but you have my stamp of approval for the writing of haikus. Uh, and now that we tested out that feature, the next one that I want to test out is the uh, response format. So this is also something that's new from the dev day. And basically, we can set the type to JSON object. I'm guessing that they set it up like this because maybe they're planning on having some other response formats that they're going to enable in the future. Um, but basically, it should respond with a JSON object every time. One thing that is important to note here is that we also have to instruct the model to produce JSON. So it's not enough just to set the response format. But when we set up the system instructions, we're going to have to say respond with JSON. Uh, OK, so here I am back in the editor. And before we actually test out the response format property for the API call, I just want to set a benchmark by changing the instructions to answer in JSON without actually setting the property. So instead of saying here, you are a helpful AI bot, I'm just going to go ahead and change this to say um, answer in JSON format. Or we can say answer user question in JSON format. And here, instead of write a haiku, I'm going to say um, give a weather report. We can get rid of this, write a haiku, get rid of that. Awesome. Uh, so let's give that a try. So I'm going to go over here and hit run. And we got a response. And yeah, so here it says response weather report and it is in JSON format. <laughs> um, so that is so like in terms of benchmark, it seems like if we just tell GPT-4 to answer in JSON format, then it will. This is only one test, so maybe if I did this 100 times, it wouldn't give back JSON every single time. But it's still not very promising in terms of like convincing me that this property is necessary. But let's just test it out and see what changes, if anything. Um, so one thing to note is that we're going to need to change our model. So the JSON mode is available with this preview model. So let's go ahead and select that. And I'm going to go to our back end and just change out the model over here. So instead of GPT-4, uh, it's going to use that new preview model. And I'm going to add in the, uh, where are we? create check completion, and the response format. So we're just going to copy that over. Response format, and we're going to have a type of a JSON object, I think it's called. Yeah, JSON object, JSON underscore object, JSON object. And let's see if anything changes. I mean, we already got JSON the first time, so I'm not sure what improvement can come in here, but let's see. So one thing I'm already noticing is it's taking a lot longer to come back. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's a preview model. Okay, so it's a much longer report. 
weather report. It's more detailed. It didn't come back with that kind of like response header that it had before, but that could just be sheer dumb luck, as they say. Um, yeah, so now that we have back this JSON response, uh, instead of me trying to evaluate and judge OpenAI, I'm sure they know what they're doing. Uh, let's talk about what we could do with this data once we get it back in JSON format. So one thing we could do is we could parse it and then send it to the front end uh, parsed already. So we'd essentially be sending back an object to the front end. So let's see how that would look. Um, so we can go ahead and here, instead of sending back the entire message, what we can do is we can send back json.parse uh, data.choices.message.content. Okay, and let me just show you what it'll look like in the back end first. It's always worth checking in the back end before we start sending things to the front end, uh, just because it's a little easier to see here. Yeah, so basically we get back this object, location, New York City, wind, okay, air quality, etc. Um, so let's try and think of what we can do. So like once you have this data, essentially, you can use it to create things on your front end in a non text format. So like something that would require data. So you can imagine that in your front end, you have like an entire page with text elements and images and stuff. And it's all populated by this data that you get back over here. Um, let's say um, if we requested, for example, give a instead of weather report, let's do a seven day, seven day forecast for New York. Let's get rid of this. And this will probably take it a long time to think of. Uh, what I'm trying to see here is if it'll come back in some form of array, uh, because that's what I how I would expect this data to come back. Uh, maybe like a an array with each day. Um, so I'm curious. Yeah, so through an error, I'm not surprised because uh, it's waiting for the response for quite a long time. What we could do to circumvent this is I'm going to add in here console.log. And I'm going to log the same thing that we're returning here. Because that should show even if we have some kind of timeout error. So let me try and run that. And to solve that timeout uh, for your website, you'll probably need to use the real time. Uh, I have another tutorial about that as well. Uh, and we'll talk about it a little more when we talk about the stream uh, in the next episode. So even though we got this error, I should still see the console log at some point when the response comes back from OpenAI, if it ever does. Uh, let's see. This is actually a great point to like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Wix content, AI content. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions or want to share your project or what you're working on uh, in the context of this uh, tutorial. And I still don't see a response. Those are old errors. Mm. What I could try doing is cutting down. We could try setting max token. So let's say, I don't know, 300, even though I don't know what much it'll be able to give back in terms of a forecast and 300 tokens, but that might help speed up the model a little bit. I definitely think that this preview model is a little slower. I don't know if because it's like built to do more complex things or handle more tokens or just because it's in preview mode. But the GPT-4 was super fast. Uh, and this seems to be slow. Which is a bummer. Um, what we could try to do is let me try to give it something less complex. So like, give me 
give a three day forecast. Let's see. If that doesn't work, I'm just going to end here and uh, let you guys play with it by yourself. Um, I mean, definitely there's a use. I'm not saying there's no use case for, for using JSON, getting JSON back. Um, oh, here we got something. OK, let's see. Forecast, days. Oh, so this is the, <laughs> this might be the uh, the first one. So it took, wow, it may have taken like two minutes. Um, but it did come back in the format that I expected. So let's say you have an array of days. Um, the real the real thing to, yeah, and each day has the same format. So that's nice. Um, the thing is how to provide a structure for the, uh, the model so that the JSON comes back in a predictable format. So for example, I need to know that it's going to come back with, you know, an object under forecast, and that's going to have the location, and then it's going to have days with an array, and each day is going to have date. So I need to know that in advance. So I'm curious um, about how to pass that data. I don't know if there's any documentation on that, or you just kind of have to give it verbal instructions, like with other kind of uh, AI related stuff, like prompt engineering. Uh, but that would be the next frontier of making sure that you get consistent JSON results that you're expecting. Uh, but definitely it's it's a cool direction. Um, and I'm looking forward to more updates to um, the chat completion uh, API. Uh, there's still one more thing called tools that we have to take a look at later on. Uh, but we're going to wrap up here. So today we talked about uh, two new features that were added to the chat completions API. One is seed and one is the response format. Uh, and the seed worked very well. I was very impressed with the seed. The response format seems to work. Uh, again, I don't see, I talked about it enough basically, <laughs> but uh, if you like the video, don't, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.